What's up traders? All right, so today we're gonna to talk about day trading terminology, specifically the term circuit breaker halts. Now, whenever we have a stock that makes a crazy move, like DRYS right here, which went from $4 to over $100 per share in four trading sessions, I get lots of traders emailing me asking about circuit breaker halts. During the move up, this stock got halted many times. So what triggers a circuit breaker halt and what exactly does that even mean? Now, this is the thing, stocks can get halted at any given time. And when a stock is halted, you cannot buy and you cannot sell. The only thing you can do is hang on for the ride and hope that it doesn't open uh, lower than the price that it halted at. So it's important for beginner traders and even experienced traders to really understand the causes of circuit breaker halts so uh, you can help reduce your risk. You can help prevent being in a situation where you're likely to get stuck holding a position through a halt. All right, so we're gonna jump in here. Now, uh, as we talk about day trading terminology, it's inevitable that other terms will come up as we talk about circuit breaker halt. So if some of those are unfamiliar to you, you could go on our website, warriortrading.com, and look them up there. So circuit breaker halts. A stock can be halted and paused from trading for several reasons. Now, during these halts, you cannot trade. You cannot trade the stock in any way. And these halts will last for a minimum of five minutes, but can last for hours or even days. Now, we have written extensively on circuit breaker halts, and there are a lot of intricacies um, to the halt. So if this video by itself isn't enough to give you a full explanation, you can also go over to our website and read about it there. There are a couple of different types of halts that you guys should be aware of. The first is a code T1. This is halted pending news. Now this can happen when the company requests that trading be halted in their stock so they can release material news. There's a couple reasons this might happen. Let's say for some reason that a company wants to release their news in the middle of the day. Typically companies will release their news after hours so they don't have to have the stock halted, right? But if you release material news in the middle of the day, uh, the company will often ask the exchange to halt their, halt their stock so no trading can take place. So earnings could be an example. Uh, another thing that happens from time to time is when we see a stock that makes a really quick move up, like a 10, 20, 30% move up, the company will halt the stock to respond to the price action. Let's say for instance that the stock is moving up because there's rumors you know, that they're gonna get bought out by like Apple or something like that. Well, the company can ask the exchange to halt shares, halt, halt trading and say, we're gonna respond to this. And they respond and say, well, yes, it's true, Apple's gonna buy us. The stock is gonna reopen higher, right? Or they say, you know what, There's that rumor is completely false. Uh, we are not interested in a sale. There's, there's just no truth to it. The stock usually opens lower. So when you're trading stocks on rumors, you have to realize that there's always the potential that the company can request that the shares be halted from trading while they respond to that news. That's why holding stocks that have been trading on rumors can be a bit risky. Now a code H10, this is the SEC suspending trading in a stock. This is bad. You never wanna be holding a stock to the long side that's halted on an H10 code. This basically is um, the type of halts we see with penny stocks, you know, with companies suspected of stock promotion or fraud. You know, those companies that send out those mailers and the emails and stuff, the next thousand percent runner those are the types of stocks that often get halted the sec wants to try to figure out you know who's manipulating it who's behind this and the sad thing is that the people who are usually still holding when it gets halted are not the people who initially got this stock going in the first place it's you know the postman and you know your plumber and just people that bought the stock because they saw the mailer and they you know wanted their chance to have a big win but unfortunately, this is a halt that we do see from time to time. Uh, the good news is that this isn't something that really affects me because I don't trade penny stocks. And I'm a big advocate of not trading penny stocks. I instead trade stocks usually between like $1.50 and, and $10 a share. So halted pending news and halted uh, on SEC uh, investigation. Those are two halts that we see you know, on a fairly regular basis, but they're, they're pretty easy to avoid. Don't trade penny stocks and be careful trading stocks that you know are running on rumors. Now, the next type of halt is the LUDP halt. This is the limit up, limit down, pause. 
It's a volatility trading pause. And this is uh, to prevent stocks essentially from having a flash crash. So if a stock suddenly drops, you know, 80%, well, we need to have some type of mechanism in place to prevent that from happening. Now, when we've had flash crashes in the past, there's been um, suspicion that these were caused by fat finger orders. So a fat finger order is when you type in 2,000 shares and you accidentally press it for 200,000 shares and you send the buy button and all of a sudden the stock takes off. Someone just you know sold 200,000 shares. The market can't handle that type of sell. You get a huge drop. Other traders start panicking and then all of a sudden you get a flash crash. And you know that's what happened. We've seen that happen several times. Um, in uh, May of 2010, there was a flash crash. The Dow Jones lost almost a thousand points uh, and it was in 10 minutes, right? Now, that happened again in uh, 87, a drop of 500 points. It was a 22% drop. And you know this is the, the fear that you know the market is uh, designed for stocks to go up, right? Stocks go up. Traders make money, investors make money, your 401ks grow. So it's important for the exchanges to put in some mechanisms to help prevent uh, a flash crash. Now, uh, this is what they did. They've got the limit up, limit down, pause. So this is a five minute halt to pause trading. It allows traders and investors to kind of, you know, gather themselves, circulate the news, understand what's happening, and it just, you know, slows down that panic. All right. Now, there are some different thresholds of what will trigger a circuit breaker halt. All right. And stocks under three dollars have different circuit breaker rules than stocks over three dollars. The circuit breaker thresholds are also doubled between 930 and 945 because that's the time of day when peak volatility exists. All right. So let's look at the breakdown of what uh, stocks are going to be included in the uh, circuit breaker halts. So tier one and tier two securities between uh, 945 and uh, 335 p.m. All right. The tier one securities, if they move up or down 5% in a period of five minutes, a circuit breaker halt will be triggered and it'll pause trading. Tier one stocks are all securities in the S&P 500, the Russell 1000 index, uh, and include some exchange traded products. They need an average of 2 million shares in daily volume. So the bands here are 5%. So the stock is not expected. These big, you know, large market cap stocks, they're not expected to move more than 5% in a period of five minutes. All right. Now, what do we use as the reference point for that 5%? And this, is, this has been a, a question that lots of traders ask me, and this is sort of where we get into the intricacies. Well, I'll explain it in one second. Now, tier two stocks, these are, um, these are all stocks priced above $3, uh, but they don't require $2 million a day or 2 million um, shares a day in volume. So they're a little less, they're not as thickly traded. These are the stocks that we are typically trading, the tier two stocks. These have thresholds at 10%. So if the stock moves up or down 10% in a five minute period, it can get halted. Now between the hours of 9.30 and 9.45 and 3.35 and 4 p.m. at the open and the close, when we see peak volatility, the bands are doubled, the volatility bands. So instead of being 10%, they're 20%. And that allows for that, you know, those spikes and whipsaws that we often see uh, right out of the gates. All right, now I won't cover the, um, the lower priced stocks. Um, we don't, I mean, I guess I'll cover it just for the sake of it, but I typically wouldn't be trading a stock, you know, below a dollar. But the stocks uh, between seventy-five cents and three dollars, they do have uh, larger bands as well. All right, so these give you a little bit more room before a circuit breaker halt's going to trigger, and that's probably most useful when you're talking about a stock that's like a two-dollar stock. You know, it's just kind of below the three-dollar threshold. Those stocks potentially uh, can squeeze and move more because they're not gonna get halted every 10% or every 20%, right? They've got a bigger band between uh, the open, during the hours of the open and the hours of the close, those bands will be uh, up to 40%, all right? So 40% moves, that allows a lot more volatility.
So what I want to do is give you an example of the circuit breaker hall. So what we're going to do is step out of this for one second and we're going to take a look at cool. This is a stock today that ran from a low of 415 all the way to a high of 622. It ran up, well, it was gapping up 32% and then it ran another 60%. So a trader might say, hey, Ross, it ran 60%. How many times did it get halted? It got halted zero times. Just when you thought you understood circuit breaker halts, you realize there's more to learn. All right, so here's the thing. The circuit breaker halt uses a reference price. Now the reference price is based on a five, the average price over the last five minutes, and it's a five minute rolling period. It's not just the last five minute candle, it's the last five minutes. All right, so let me, let me show you, let's break this down. So now cool opened here. We had a pre-market high of 450, we pulled back a little bit, and then we started squeezing up. Now, if I switch this here to a one minute chart, pull this back here like this. So in the first one minute candle, this squeezed from 416 up to a high of 487, which is a pretty big move, but it's not 20%. Now remember, because we're trading in the first 15 minutes, our thresholds are doubled. This is a stock priced above $3. It's a tier two security. So its bands are 10% from 9.45 until 3.35, and at the open and at the close, the bands are 20%. So if this moves 20%, it'll get halted on a five minute circuit breaker halt. However, that's 20% from where? Is it 20% from the low of this candle? No, it's 20% from the average price over the last five minutes. So here, you know, the high in the last five minutes was 4.49, and the low was 410. So we've got an average price of just about 425. All right, so with an average price of 425, this would need to move 85 cents from 425 in order to get halted. All right, so that would put us at $5.10. We didn't get to $5.10, we pulled back, so we did not get a circuit breaker halt. All right, now the next candle start to squeeze up and we move here from 450 up to 550 but again we're always basing on the rolling period of the last five minutes so let's say now we're looking at the last five minutes let's say at this red candle i'll just put a line here this is our mark this is our mark price we'll mark this here so the last five minutes one two three four five so the average price of these five minutes right here we had a low of 416 and a high of 497 so 497 minus 416 it's 81 cents, so the average price is 456, right around 456. That's our midpoint. All right, so 456 times 20% is 91 cents. So we need to go from 456 plus 91 cents, we need to go up to 547 in order to get a circuit breaker halt. All right, so look at this squeeze. The squeeze is here up to $5, up to 530 up to 537, up to 550. So that's really interesting, right? We just got to 550 right here. But by the point, so from here to here, we just hit that 20%. But remember, at this point now, we're basing the midpoint price on the last five minutes. So here, the last five minutes, the high was 537 and the low was one, two, three, four, five and the low is 427. So 537 minus 427 is, let's see, divide by, so it's 55. So 537 minus 55 cents is 482. So now this needs to go up 20% from 482, which would be 96 cents plus 482 is 578. So now the trigger is 578. Well, we haven't hit it yet, right? We hit 550. Now, this is what keeps happening. Every five minute rolling period, we're getting the midpoint or the mid price, the reference price is being reset. And it keeps getting reset throughout the day. So what we need to see in order for a stock to get halted is inside five minutes, and it's not five minute candles, it's just inside five minute periods, we need to see the stock squeeze up more than 20% if we're at the open or the close, or more than 10% during the day. Now. Here's another thing that makes this a little tricky. Just because the stock breaks the band does not immediately trigger a halt. The stock actually has to break the band 
and hold above the top or bottom band for 15 seconds. So as soon as the stock breaks out of its band, a 15 second timer starts. And if the stock returns to trading back within the, the, the reasonable bands, we won't have a circuit breaker halt. But if it continues to trade outside those bands, the stock will be halted for five minutes. Now, during a five minute circuit breaker halt, a stock can then be halted pending news. So the halt code can change in the middle of a circuit breaker halt. Let's say you get a circuit breaker halt and then the company says, well, hold up, we actually, the stock is running maybe on a rumor or something like that. We do want to halt trading because we're going to release material news. You know, we're going to say, yes, this halt is, or yes, this rumor is real or no, this rumor is not real, etc." So we can have that happen. It happens from time to time. Now let's look at another example here. Um, so that was a stock that ran 60% uh, without getting halted because it uh, just was falling slightly short of the circuit breaker halt uh, thresholds. All right, and that's specifically because of the five minute rolling period. If that was based on the midpoint of the last five minute candle, it would have been halted. All right, but that's not what it's based on. All right, so now let's look at DRYS. This is the stock that made the crazy, crazy move. All right, so here we go. I've got this stock here. So this is a stock that was halted for a cup for, let's see, it was halted for a day. I think it was a day and a half, actually, well, let's see, I can see the dates right here. Yeah, it was halted for a day. It was halted for about a, a day and a couple hours. So it was halted pre-market and it was halted, uh, I believe it was halted by the exchange. They, they were like, okay, this stock is $120 a share. We need to halt this and we need to, the company to respond to what's going on with the stock. So I believe it was halted pending um, more information from the company. And then, so halted uh, by the SEC or by a NASDAQ. And then uh, during this time when it was halted, the company did a secondary offering. All right, we talk about this uh, in our uh, terms video where we talk about float. All right, so the company did a secondary offering. It's like a second IPO. They sell more shares onto the open market to raise money. All right, stock reopens and it reopens a lot lower. All right, and now we're at a point where, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to go back far enough on my one minute chart here, but now we're at a point where we're gonna see many circuit breaker halts back to back to back to back. The stock is just tanking. And basically you don't have buyers. All you have are sellers. And so what you have is a real imbalance between the buyers and the sellers. And that caused the stock to drop very quickly. All right, so you can see right here, Let's back up. All right, so we opened, this candle opened at 51.08. 51.08 and it dropped to a low of 45.97 before it was halted. So it basically dropped five points and was halted. It reopens here at $36. It drops to 31 drops about three points and is halted. It opens lower. It opens at a low of, it opens at 26. It drops down uh, and then is halted again. We resume and on this one, we bounce up and here we get halted going back up. We squeeze up, you know, about two and a half points and we're halted. So this keeps getting halted on 10% circuit breakers. We halt three times going down, we halt once going up and let's see, um, there was the one halt there. And I can see by looking at the timer that this was 1043, this candle, and this candle was 1048. So I know there was a five minute circuit breaker right there. Um, and let's see, 54, 59. We had another five minute circuit breaker right here. So this was halted at 54 going up and reopens here a little bit higher. So we had one, two, three, four, five circuit breaker halts, you know, in a period of, uh, gosh, when did this resume? It resumed at 1030, so in a period of about 35 minutes. This was an extremely volatile stock. What's important to know is that when stocks are halted going down, they usually open lower. They're halting going down because there's no buyers. And if, they're, if the buyers don't show up, all you have are sellers trying to get out. And the result is that the stock is going to open lower. You don't have buyers there to, to create the bid. Stock opens lower. On the other hand, when stocks get halted squeezing up, there's a very good chance that they open higher. And this is what we were seeing on DRYS uh, through these halts 
we were having a squeeze, halt, and open higher. You can see some of these in here. Let's see, where's a good one? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. We've got a couple right in here. We squeeze, we open a little bit higher. It's not the, not the best example. I can go to GLBS, this one might be a better one. Um, but when stocks are squeezing on, go, and going up, they usually end up opening higher. And so the result, and here you go, there's, there's some good jumps. So it just keeps opening higher, 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 higher. And this is a stock that literally went from $8 a share to $24 a share in one day, right? So there's huge potential there. But what if you're the guy that bought on this candle at 22 and then all of a sudden it resumes at 16, right? That's when things get scary. So you have to be careful trading halts. My rule of thumb when I trade halts is that if a stock gets halted, I will trade after the first halt. And if it squeezes up and gets halted again, I'll trade after the second halt. I don't trade after the third halt. That's my rule. I trade after the first and the second halt, but I don't go further than that. That's kind of for me like trading uh, the first and second pullback. You know, I trade the first pullback on a bull flag. I trade the second pullback, but then I don't push my luck after that. All right, so let's jump back into the slides here. Um, so we've gone through this. You understand that there are some intricacies here. This is not the most crystal clear type of thing. Um, of course, if you're in our chat room, I'll, I'll be able to walk you guys through this when we have examples in real time. But I also have a couple examples right here that I recorded. So what you're gonna notice is that the stock, uh, just before it's halted, the level two becomes pinned at a fixed price. So when the level two is pinned, it's a really good indicator that the stock is about to get halted. We're looking at AKAO, which is this uh, level two right down here in the, uh, the, bottom, the bottom corner. All right, so we're gonna watch this. This is a stock squeezing up, currently up 30%. And I believe we're at 9.30. So we're in the early morning. We've got our larger 20% bands. We just squeezed up, now we're 50 by 60. 50 on the bid, 51 on the ask. So we know this thing you know, just popped up, it just flashed being up I think 40% or something like that for a moment but remember it has to hold for 15 seconds over those bands in order to get circuit breaker halts all right so we get just a little bit of a pullback so this is the type of stock I'm watching as soon as it pops back over the half dollar there's the pop over the half dollar now we're up to 70 80 74 on the bid 82 on the ask 69 on the ask so this is one of those ones that I'm thinking the next target is $5. Can this move up to $5? There's 84, I jumped in. Now we're starting to trade outside the bands. So 15 second timer has started. See how the price is pinned right here at 513? We're about to get halted. See how it's stacked there and pinned right at 513? This is gonna get halted and it's gonna show a P right here for pause. There we go, we're paused. So we're halted now, and we're gonna be halted for exactly five minutes. So this halted at 32.05, it's gonna resume at 37.05, exactly five minutes later, almost, almost exactly. All right, so let's fast forward this just a little bit. All right, so we've got about 30 seconds left. Now, the high was 5.13, over 5.13 is a potential add. Now I jumped into this, but I chased it and I've got small size. So this isn't gonna be a big winner for me. But I have had trades where I'm holding through a halt with 5,000 or even 10,000 shares. And when they open higher, the profits, they can just be crazy. You can make a ton of money trading circuit breaker halts if you understand the right entries. All right, so this should be resuming in about 10 seconds. It'll resume, like I said, five minutes from when it was halted. 37.01, 0.2, three there we go and we're open 545 look at that look at that so on this one i'm just adding i'm like let's just ride this all right but remember we're going to watch the bands so we got, got up to a high of 608 we squeezed up we didn't hold up there long enough to get the full halt i added and then i flipped back out ended up making 1200 dollars on this trade profiting uh, just by understanding that stocks that get halted, they've got this imbalance, they're very likely to continue squeezing. So we have the high of 608. Now, when I watch this, you know, we'll see what happens on the low. We certainly wouldn't want to see it break below $5, but these ones uh, sometimes are not able to hold up if they are getting just irrationally strong.
let's fast forward this a little bit more. So in this one, I actually switched and jumped in OPGN, trading a different stock, but I don't think that that one's gonna get halted. It looks like AKAO is just kind of fading, not doing much yet. So in any case, it's, you know, $2,200 in 10 minutes of trading, not too bad. All right, now let's look at another example. All right, looking at the stock about to get halted. So right now we've got HMNY that was halted and it was halted at 12.04 and something. So this will resume any moment. There's the resumption. I'm watching this, looking to get in. I jumped in right there, 5,000 shares at 66 and or 16 and look at how quickly we just squeezed up. We're, we're 460 on the ask. So this was halted and just squeezed. $5, next target. Now, right now, are we trading outside those bands? See the way this is trading? It looked like for a second, we may have been trading outside those bands, so there was a little bit of risk there. Risk of a, uh, of a second halt. And we do see stocks like DRYS that halt back to back to back to back. Now look at the spreads on this. This one's tough because we're like 490 and then 440. It's just all over the place. So I was able to put out an order up there, scale out most of my position, locked up $2,000 in profit. If it can get over $5, obviously that would be awesome. But this is a tough one to trade. 433 by 474, we're up 326% today. Right, and that's pretty crazy. But as day traders, we love volatility. This is what we look for, stocks that are making big moves because this is where we can profit. So let's see, let's fast forward this a little bit more. So it looks like I sold the rest of that position. A little pullback. Still hanging out there under that $5 spot. So we broke over five, it looks like we broke 518. As soon as we broke that level, suddenly we were 550 on the ask. Anyone who had shorted starts covering. They're like, all right, you know, I accept defeat. I was wrong on this one. And all of a sudden, right, we're, tr we're outside for 15 seconds. And now, look at how the level two is getting pinned. 62 by 64, 62, 62, we're halted. Now we're gonna be halted for five minutes. We'll resume at 1218 in about 16 seconds. So I fast forwarded this right to that point. So now we're gonna resume. I look to add over 560. Whenever I trade stocks out of halts, I, I usually like to add over the high of the halt if we open lower. Or if we open higher, I'll add at a whole dollar, like $4 the way I did here. Or sometimes I'll add you know, at the half dollar of like 450. Now we're still having an issue with fairly big spreads on this, which does make it a little bit more risky uh, but this is fairly similar to what we saw in DRYS. There's 67, there's 70, 72 on the ask, 61 on the bid. At this point, I'm up $4,600 on the day, so I'm not being as aggressive to buy this really high, just knowing how quickly it could drop back down to 520. With 4,000 shares, I'd be down $2,000. It's not hard to give up half your day being too aggressive in the afternoon or, you know, at lunchtime. We're up 440% in one day. 435 on the ask. That kind of thing happens when someone who's short just presses the market order to bail out and, you know, suddenly you get this spike up to the next level. But in this case, this stock, you know, we're looking at the five minute uh, rolling period, right? So we're looking at the price uh, over the last five minutes. And if it doesn't exceed 10%, then, you know, we're not going to get halted. So it just continues to look at the last five minutes. Actually, this one, um, this one may have been under different threshold because of the fact that it started below $3. That's actually an interesting, interesting question. I'm not sure at what point the rule changes um, say a stock you know opens under three dollars what point does it cross over to changing thresholds I don't know if that happens midday or if that happens um, only um, at any time during the day
All right, so here we have CDRB. This is up 33% and it's currently halted. It was halted at 10.22 and 24 seconds. So it'll resume at 10.27 and 24 seconds. So we'll fast forward this a little bit. All right, so as soon as we resume, the high was 6.25. 6.25 would be a possible entry. So I've got my order at 6.30 right now. Resumption's there. So we open a little higher. We end up opening high. We've got a high of 660. And now it's kind of like, are we going to see buyers just pour into this and are we going to squeeze? Or are we going to see this roll over? As soon as I see that bid there of 55, that's kind of the thing that I look for. That tells me that other traders are looking at this too. So now we're 84 by $7. 25 cent spread, not ideal. So there's 704, 717. Seven thirty-two. So you can see this is moving up, but at the same time, we've got these big spreads, and you know at a certain point here, we're gonna get close to the outside of those bands. All right, so at 660 or 670, it's about you know a 60 cent, 70 cent band. It needs to hold outside of that for 15 seconds. So every one minute candle that closes, the reference point when these are moving quickly is gonna move up quickly as well. Because the average price of the last candle is 675. So it's gonna keep moving up. That means stocks really have to be extreme in order to get halted. So this is very light volume, you know, 717 by 726 right now. I've been watching it, haven't taken a position on it. We'll fast forward this a little bit, see if we pop up for another halt. So this right here is forming a flag on the one minute chart. We've got our bull flag, the big flag pull, the candle's coming back. So this is one where I would say, well, over $7, you know, we could get an opportunity, possibly a break. But you know, the more it sells off here is it starts to fill the gap coming down, it just becomes broken, especially as it breaks that moving average, which is really more getting into bull flags. But um, in any case, it's good to know that. So this, one's, this one would be out of play for me. Now, uh, as many of you guys know, we had Black Monday. This was August 24th, 2015, Black Monday round two. Uh, there were over 1,200 circuit breaker halts when the market opened. It was pretty crazy. So uh, the market tanked a thousand points causing circuit breaker halts on the way down. And then as stocks popped up, we had circuit breaker halts going back up. There was so much volatility, but you know, it actually could have been a lot worse. If we didn't have those circuit breaker halts, it could have been a lot worse because I mean, the market was just, it was completely tanking. So these you know are there to uh, really to help reduce um, to help reduce risk, to help reduce volatility, so that when we have bad days, they're not going to be, um, you know, they're not going to be as bad as, um, you know, as they could be. So let's go back here. Let's see if I can go back. Actually, I might not be. Oh, I'm on a five-minute chart. I was going to say. All right. So let's look at the daily chart. I just want to show you this. And and every stock. I mean, you know, from Facebook. I mean, every single stock was halting. I mean, these are stocks dropping. You know, tier one stocks dropping 5% and getting uh, triggered on these circuit breaker halts. So let's see, where are we now? So on this day right here, August 24th, the market just absolutely tanked. I mean, you can see this is, we dropped from 196 here on the SPY all the way down to a low of 182. That's a, that's a huge, huge drop in one day. But you know, this candle ended up being, it ended up being a bounce. We dropped down and then we popped right back up. And I think that's thanks to the fact that we had those circuit breaker halts. Traders were allowed to pause, think about what was going on. Some of them realized the selling was overdone 
And then we were able to, in between one of those circuit breaker halts, momentum shifts. And all of a sudden buyers start to come in thinking, you know what, I can get these stocks on discount right now. They just dropped 10%. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna buy them up on discount. And look, we got this big pop over the next, even over the next few weeks, we got a 10% move off those lows. So that was a quick 10% bounce in major indices and in, and in S&P 500 stocks. So this is, um, you know, the circuit breaker halts for us is something that we deal with primarily with the low price stocks because that's where we see it the most. But uh, these also exist for the high price stocks, for the tier one stocks, and even for the entire exchanges. All right. So, you know, this is one of those ways to uh, try to uh, prevent risk and, you know, reduce the, the chance of having the market drop, you know, 2000 points in one day. And that's important. You know, the so many investors and traders, we have a long bias. You know, we buy stocks expecting them to go up. You certainly don't want to have the risk that a stock can lose 50 percent um, over the course of five minutes because somebody puts out a giant order by accident. Right. And I think as it turned out, that was not the cause of the um, the flash crashes that we've seen. But uh, they weren't fat finger orders, but uh, it was like algorithms that went haywire. But in any case, uh, I think it's still a good security measure to have. And the cool thing is that uh, as traders looking for volatility, we found a way that we can profit from the circuit breaker halts. So, you know, when we see a stock that's halted, it pauses, it gives traders a chance to catch up on what's going on so we can jump in and get a piece of the action. All right, guys, so I hope this has helped you understand circuit breaker halts. I know it can be a little confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me either in our chat room, in the comments, or by email, ross at warriortrading.com. Hey guys, I also wanna remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click by subscribing. That way you can get alerts when I upload new videos, like my teaching you how to day trade video or the video where I turned $1,000 into $8,600 in one month. Thanks guys.